Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look about the intensive care unit. Today's video was requested by several people, and the big question is how did I decide to do a critical care fellowship versus a pulmonary critical care fellowship? or some variation of that question. I know some of you who watch my videos are in medical training and are trying to decide your career path. And it is a very individual decision. I think you learn a lot about yourself when you're choosing your specialty. You might be interested in things that you never thought you'd be interested in. You might be not very interested in things you thought you were interested in once you start doing them. So. I think at the end of the day, everybody finds their specialty and their reasons for it, but I will just give you my reasons for why I picked critical care. And another question was, what's the big differences between these programs? I can only speak from my own experience in my own critical care program, but I will give you some overview and just general things, the difference between pulmonary critical care fellowship and critical care fellowship because for the most part, there are there is a lot of overlap. So first, let's go into the differences between these programs. So I'm speaking from somebody who came from an internal medicine background going into critical care. You can go into critical care from a surgical background, anesthesia, emergency medicine. So there are multiple ways to get to this career path, but me specifically, I came from internal medicine and there are subtle differences between my path and somebody who came from emergency medicine, surgery, or anesthesia. So keep that in mind. For internal medicine and going into critical care only, it is a two-year fellowship program following completing three years of internal medicine residency. These programs are outside of the match. If you don't know what the match is, if you're not in the medical field, I did make a video discussing what the match is and what match day is. It's one of my earlier videos. I'll link it up here, but just keep in mind, it's probably one of the first five videos I made, so the quality is not excellent, but you'll get the idea of what match day is and what the match is. But essentially, being outside of the match, you think it would be less stressful because the match for residency was an incredibly stressful process. It felt like so many things were out of your hand, but I think that being outside of the match is also stressful because these programs are trying to lock in the most competitive candidates as soon as they can. So everybody is rushing to interview you as soon as they can. I had some weeks with stacked interviews and another wrench thrown into it is I went on a medical mission trip to Africa during the interview season, which I do not regret because it was a great experience, but being out of contact for two weeks and unable to interview for two weeks was probably not the wisest decision on my part. It did work out in the end, but looking back, um, I think I would have won again. <laughs> I do, but it, it made it extra stressful. And also at that time, my then uh, boyfriend slash fiance was applying to a specialty that was inside of the match. So we could not really plan exactly together where we were going to go because he was dependent on where he went inside the match and I had limited options outside of the match. Another thing to mention is there were only 30 programs for critical care to your program in the country at the time I applied. I don't know if there's more at this time, but there are not very many. There are much more pulmonary programs. There are over 100 pulmonary programs and 30 critical care programs, and not all of them were accepting applications for my application year. So I guess going back to complete my story about outside of the match, so you will get interviewed and very soon after the interview, you get offered a position and you are told you have X amount of time to decide if you want this offer or not. So you might have to decide if you want to keep the offer or continue to interview at your subsequent places that you have on your interview schedule. So you really need to hope that the place you want to go to the most is one of your first interviews and offering you initially or 
you might have to hedge your bets and play a little bit of gambling to determine if you are going to take the spot you're offered that kind of has a time limit on your decision or say no or try to negotiate with that program and say, hey, I'm interviewing for another program I'm very interested in. I'm also interested in yours. Can I have more time to think about it? Which sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So it is a stressful process, but I think either way, match or no match, this whole process is stressful to, to begin with. For critical care medicine, obviously most of your time is spent in the intensive care unit. Pulmonary fellows will have time in clinic, doing pulmonary consult months, doing interventional pulmonary months. And I'm not saying that these are more or less stressful than ICU, but it is a change of pace when you're not in the ICU your whole fellowship. So it was exhausting, it was stressful, it was a lot of time, and these are things that can vary program to program, how they set up their call schedule for ICU, how much time you're expected to be in house versus at home, if you have a night float system versus a home call system. My program had a home call system, so we never stayed in the hospital overnight, but we were very much expected to go back to the hospital if there was an emergency or procedure to be done overnight, which there usually was. So I felt like I did not get sleep for two years. And another benefit of going to a critical care only program is you get to see a lot of different ICU. So you'll be in the medical ICU, surgical ICU, neuro ICU, the cardiac ICUs. At my program, there were multiple different types of cardiac ICU. There was the CCU, which was, you know, typical coronary care, and the CV, LVAT ICU, where people have mechanical circulatory support and different devices. And my particular interest was cardiac ICU. That's why I selected my program in particular because I knew I would get the cardiac experience I wanted. About a quarter of my fellowship I spent doing something cardiac related, which I feel prepared me for the career that I have right now. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I am transitioning into the cardiovascular ICU and doing mechanical circulatory support. I just got ECMO um, certified. I am learning how to cannulate for ECMO. So these are things that I really wanted as part of my career. And not to say that I had to go to this particular fellowship program to do that, but if you're internal medicine and you want to do cardiovascular surgical ICU, they usually want to know you had that experience. They usually prefer somebody who had the anesthesia critical care or surgical critical care just because they know that that is a lot of what they do, particularly during their training. And anesthesia has combined programs where they do a combined cardiac anesthesia as well as cardiac critical care fellowship program. So many times they are more hesitant to hire someone with an internal medicine background because many internal medicine programs don't have those experiences. So that's a little sidebar on why I picked my particular program and what my career goals were. And... Not to say you can't get there with pulmonary and critical care, but if you want to do cardiac ICU, you need to think about how much pulmonary you're going to be doing in your career in general, because most people, all people that I know who do CVICU do not do anything but that. You're not going to have a pulmonary clinic. You're not going to be doing pulmonary consult months. You're not going to be doing interventional pulmonary. Your job is going to be to work in the CVICU and that is it. So what are some things that we learn in general in critical care fellowships? So you're going to learn a lot more about the ventilator. No matter which residency program you come from, you're going to learn ventil you're going to learn ventilator basics during these residency programs. You learn it during medical school, but you'll learn about a lot of advanced ventilation techniques and advanced ventilator settings and modes during critical care fellowship because you're going to get those patients that are difficult to vent ventilate, difficult to oxygenate. You need to start troubleshooting the vent and that is where you learn it. You're also going to learn a lot more about hemodynamics, hemodynamic management. So this is management of the cardiovascular system, whether it is how hard their heart is pumping, how fast their heart is pumping, 
how their blood pressure is, if it's up, if it's down, if they're having an arrhythmia, you're going to learn a lot about this. And if you do anything in the CV ICU on mechanical su circ support, once you add a device to that circuit, so you have an external device or circuit plus the patient's internal circuit that might be dysfunctional, you have a lot to think about in terms of where the breakdown is in the circuit is and how you can help the patient's dysregulation. So that is something that I really enjoy. That's how I ended up in CV. So you learn a lot more about that during, or during critical care fellowship. You'll do a lot of procedures, you know, arterial lines, central lines, bronchoscopies. We had a procedure team as one of my rotations during fellowship. So we were the go-to person to do any lines, paracentesis, thoracentesis, chest tubes, lumbar punctures. We, we did all of that during that month. Learn about, you know, ICU management of different conditions, obviously, because you're in critical care fellowship, you're in the ICU. So you learn a lot of, of different ways to treat a condition because as they tell you in medical school, patients don't read the textbook. Everybody's very individualized. So things that work for the majority in a medical condition might not work for a particular patient. So you need to figure out what's going on in their body and how to, how to treat it. And we also do a lot of educational activities such as board review, doing noon conference, doing case report, um, or, you know, fellow case conference where you'll discuss an interesting case with the, the group and everyone's trying to talk through the diagnosis, through the treatment. Sometimes it might be a patient that is still active and you're trying to figure out a diagnosis so everybody talks about it together, doing QI projects, doing research projects, all of those educational activities, very similar to residency you still do in fellowship. Most fellowship programs are associated with places that have medical schools and residents, so you'll be the leader of that team to work with the residents, work with the interns, work with the medical students, and teach them about the ICU. You know, sometimes you'll have a student or resident who is particularly interested in critical care, so you'll mentor them and tell them about why you went into the field, what interviewing was like, what your experience is like. Just like when you're a resident and you have a medical student interested in what you want to go into. And you'll also supervise them doing procedures. You'll talk to them about the new patients coming into the unit. Um, you're usually the go-to before the attending to talk about the plan for the day for each patient. So there's a lot of education, a lot of supervision. But of course, if there's any difficult or advanced procedure, the fellow will be doing that. And that does vary program to program. I felt like where I did my residency, the residents did pretty much all of the procedures except intubations, chest tubes, and bronchoscopy. Those were the three that at our program we just were not allowed to do. Um, but where I did my fellowship, I felt like the fellows did a lot more procedures and the residents didn't get as much. I don't know if it was a lack of interest on the, the residents part or if they just didn't feel like they had the time to do the procedures because they had other clinical work to do. But I feel like I did almost as many lines during my residency as I did during my fellowship where during my residency the fellows didn't do a ton of lines because they were doing more advanced procedures. Another thing that I did during fellowship which was specific to my program because we took home call was the residents would call me overnight with every patient that they would get consulted on on the floor or in the emergency room that the other provider felt needed to come to the ICU. So we would talk about whether we would accept or decline this patient ICU admission if they did not meet ICU criteria. And we talk about you know what we would recommend to that team to treat that patient to avoid ICU admission. Or if they get admitted to the ICU, we would talk about their full treatment plan. And of course, if they needed any procedures, I would come into the hospital and do them. So. That is something that I wish I asked more about during my interviews because I didn't realize how much I would be going into the hospital in a program that had home call because where I did my residency, we did have a two-year critical care program and they did night float where they would be in the hospital the whole night for the 12-hour shift, but then they would go home and, and get rest and then come back instead of having this cycle of 
you know, you're in the hospital, but then you go home, but you're still taking call. Hopefully I answered your questions about why I pick critical care uh, versus pulmonary and what a critical care fellowship looks like versus a pulmonary fellowship. Um, I guess just to summarize for critical care versus pulmonary for me in particular, I did not have a passion for pulmonary like some of my pulmonary colleagues do. I don't dislike the lungs, but I don't like them more than any other organ system. I think if I had to pick a favorite, obviously it would be cardiac. So as somebody who had cardiac ICU goals, it made more sense for me to do a critical care only fellowship. In addition to that, I you know don't really enjoy outpatient clinic. I had a negative experience with clinic during my internal medicine residency, so I didn't have a desire to do a fellowship or specialty that involved clinic. But like I said, everybody lands on their career goals one way or another. Explore everything. There are so many different options out there. There are things that you might not even know as an option as a specialty. So talk to people about why they pick their specialty. Think about what you want your life to look like after training. And even within the critical care world, there are many critical care jobs that look different one to the other. So you can't even necessarily pick it based on what you expect your life to be afterwards because me as a cardiovascular intensivist, my day looks a lot different from a medical intensivist or somebody working at a community hospital. They're are just so many options even after you leave fellowship for what your career will look like. So find something that you're passionate about that you can picture yourself doing every day, whether you have an interesting case or a bread and butter case. So I encourage you to explore all specialties. If you have any more questions about a career in critical care, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below or find me over on Instagram at the intense MD and I'll be happy to answer them or make more videos regarding this topic. Thank you for watching and I'll be back next week with another video.